me, obviously there's no such thing as a miracle weight loss drug. You are trading something. In this case, it's beauty because it ages you. And secondly, by the way, it can kill you. You were open about using, uh, not a Zempic, whatever it is. Do you yeah, feel like- I took the, oh, to, Listen, do you remember what I looked like during till? Yeah. That was the only way they could jumpstart my system to get off. Do any of you men have any eggs or the possibility of carrying a fetus? How dare you talk about what a fetus wants? You have no idea. Honestly, this isn't even about whether you're pro-choice or pro-life. I just do not like bad arguments. If you want drama, she will give you drama. As a provocateur, Candace Owens stands alone. The recently fired Daily Wire host built a reputation as one of the few Black voices in right-wing media by tossing Black culture and Black people under the conservative buzz. And yes, her unforgiving tongue reaches far beyond politics, now hitting Hollywood, with the likes of Whoopi being some of her well-known casualties. From your co-host. Do any of you men have any eggs or the possibility of carrying a fetus? How dare you talk about what a fetus wants? You have no- Candace has allegedly accused Whoopi of defending woke Hollywood, especially when it comes to matters of weight loss, childbearing, and parenting, with the likes of Oprah Winfrey being mentioned as well. All right, counterpoint uh, to you, Whoopi Goldberg. Number two, uh, did you guys know back at home, by the way, that in 2017, Whoopi Goldberg received a GLAAD Media Award for executively producing a show called Strut? Earlier this year, Whoopi revealed that she is one of the big name personalities who use weight loss drugs to secure movie roles, and Candace wasted no time tearing her apart. You just heard Candace mention Strut. You may be wondering what on earth is this? Well, Strut is an American reality television series that premiered on September 20th, 2016 on the Oxygen Cable Network. Announced in May 2016, the reality series follows the professional lives of a group of transgender models. The show is executive produced by Whoopi Goldberg. That's another issue that Candace allegedly had with Whoopi, but the weight loss thing is where she decided to strike. On all this stuff and one of the things that's helped me drop the weight is the is the not majolica Majora. according to candace whoopi and her friend oprah endorsed the drugs just to secure the bag nothing more nothing less here is whoopi talking some more about the weight loss drug i weighed almost 300 pounds when i made till yeah mm -hmm. and yeah. yeah and i was i had taking all those steroids, I was on all this stuff, and one of the things that's helped me drop the weight. Oprah also said what she had to say. Hearing about the weight loss drugs, I felt I've gotta do this on my own, because if I take the drug, that's the easy way out. But despite both being industry juggernauts, Candace didn't hesitate to expose them. Obviously, there's no such thing as a miracle weight loss drug. You are trading something. In this case, it's beauty because it ages you. And secondly, by the way, it can kill Her problem with Whoopi emanated from the actress's stand on weight loss drugs that many Hollywood personalities are advised to use, something Candace sharply disagrees with. In a May 2024 interview, Whoopi Goldberg recalled the moment she realized she wanted to start her weight loss journey. I made the 2022 drama Till, and a woman thought I was wearing a fat suit. Goldberg said during a May 13th appearance on the Kelly Clarkson show. Younger, I don't know what, so like you're like Benjamin Button. It's like, it's like crazy every time you it's, walk in. First of all, it's all the weight I've lost because no. I've lost almost two people. I, I have lost a lot as well. At the time, the veteran screen star was 300 pounds, but she shared that she's lost a significant amount of weight since. Goldberg has spoken openly about using a weight loss drug to improve her health, something Candace doesn't buy for a minute. I'm doing that wonderful shot that works for folks who need some help, and it's been really good for me, the TV host told Clarkson after she commented on how youthful Goldberg looked. It's all the weight I've lost. I've lost almost two people, the EGOT winner added, in reference to the number of pounds she's shed. But before the fat suit remark, Goldberg said she hadn't thought much about her weight. You're living your life and you're doing what you need to do and that's the last thing you're thinking about, she explained. 
Hearing it upset her and prompted her to start asking people if they'd noticed her weight gain. You say to people, did I always look like that? Goldberg recalled. When you realize it, you go, damn. And everyone says, well, I thought you knew. The actress previously opened up about taking weight loss medication on The View in March after Oprah Winfrey's special shame, blame, and the weight loss revolution, which looked at the impact of drugs like Ozempic and Munjaro. Help me drop the weight is the, is the, not Majolica. Munjaro. Munjaro. Yeah. That's what I use. One of the things that's helped me drop the weight, Goldberg said at the time, was Munjaro. She also spoke about the stigma surrounding weight loss drugs and said the key is to stop judging everybody. My weight has come and gone and up and down, but it's never been an issue for me because I don't listen to what other people say about me, so it has never been a problem, she continued. But I think it's very hard for people to just know what a normal weight would be. Everyone has something to say, but no one said, how are you doing? Because it involves so many other things. I always felt like me, and then I saw me and thought, Oh, that's a lot of me, Goldberg added. You have to take responsibility for yourself and see what's going on with your body. Whoopi, despite being an industry veteran, has rubbed a few shoulders the wrong way, and Candace is not about to spare her either. Late last year, the Oscar winner apologized for her comments about Jews and race after her remarks reignited a controversy that got her suspended from The View. Recently, while doing press in London, I was asked about my comments from earlier this year, she said in a statement to Variety. I tried to convey to the reporter what I had said and why, and attempted to recount that time. It was never my intention to appear as if I was doubling down on hurtful comments, especially after talking with and hearing people like rabbis and old and new friends weighing in. I'm still learning a lot and believe me, I heard everything everyone said to me. I believe that the Holocaust was about race, and I am still as sorry now as I was then that I upset, hurt, and angered people. My sincere apologies again, especially to everyone who thought this was a fresh rehash of the subject. I promise it was not. In this time of rising anti-Semitism, I want to be very clear when I say that I always stood with the Jewish people and always will. My support for them has not wavered and never will. Breaking news overnight, The View co-host Whoopi Goldberg suspended for two weeks for her comments about the Holocaust. Errol Reshev has the story. Whoopi once again courted controversy after she was suspended from The View in February after saying the Holocaust was not about race. In an interview with the Sunday Times, the actress said some Jewish people themselves are divided over whether they are a race or a religion. She also doubled down and said the Holocaust wasn't originally about race do this, then let's be truthful about it because the Holocaust isn't about race. My best friend said, not for nothing is there no box on the census for the Jewish race. So that leads me to believe that we're probably not a race, Goldberg said. When the Times interviewer reminded Goldberg that the Nazis saw Jews as a race, Goldberg responded, yes, but that's the K, isn't it? The oppressor is telling you what you are. Why are you believing them? They're Nazis. Why believe what they're saying? It wasn't originally about race. Remember who they were, K-first? They were not K-racial, they were K-physical. They were K-people they considered to be mentally defective. And then they made this decision. Anti-Defamation League CEO Jonathan Greenblatt railed against Goldberg for her latest comments, writing on Twitter, Whoopi Goldberg's comments about the Holocaust and race well, are deeply offensive and incredibly ignorant. When she made similar comments earlier this year, we explained how the Nazi regime was inherently racist. He further wrote, Whoopi's comments show a complete lack of awareness of the multi-ethnic, multi-racial makeup of the Jewish community. Greenblatt continued, she needs to apologize immediately and actually commit to educating herself on the true nature of hash anti-Semitism. Goldberg's original remarks emerged during a late January episode of The View, in which the co-hosts discussed a Tennessee school board's ban of mouse, a nonfiction graphic novel about cartoonist Art Spiegelman's father's experience surviving the Holocaust. Let's be truthful about it because the Holocaust isn't about race, 
the actress said at the time. It's not about race, it's about man's inhumanity to man. The remarks drew immediate sweeping criticism from Jewish organizations, including the Anti-Defamation League and the U.S. Holocaust Museum. Candace is taking over and putting Whoopi in her rightful place, and woke Hollywood is disturbed. The author has developed a wide reach over the years that may as well destroy whatever the gatekeepers are planning to do. You aren't alone if you have never heard of Candace Owens until recently. Less than a decade ago, she was an unknown college dropout working as a marketing professional in New York, writing pieces for her company's website about the uh, bats tea crazy antics of the Republican Tea Party. Then suddenly she claimed to have experienced a political conversion. She told the libertarian political commentator Dave Rubin in 2017, I became a conservative overnight. I realized that liberals were actually racists. Liberals were actually the trolls. At the time, Candace, who is African-American, had been gaining followers as a YouTuber under the name of Red Pill Black, posting provocative videos with titles such as, I don't care about Charlottesville, the KKK, or white supremacy. Such pseudo-transgressive hot takes garnered praise from far-right figures like Alex Jones of InfoWars. She parlayed that popularity into a stint with Turning Point USA, the grassroots group, during which she toured college campuses with TP USA Chief Charlie Kirk, admonishing students to stop acting like victims and embrace Donald Trump. I know you don't think I'm giving this $4 million to a bunch of nuns. Oh, to me. The Daily Wire hired her in 2020 to host her own show, Candace, on its platform. Candace was precisely the kind of person the conservative movement and conservative new media in particular thought it needed to cultivate. Young, hip, black, and adept at working across many new media platforms, she appeared to be the perfect conservative controversialist. However, as Candace's audience has grown, so has her comfort level with airing not only her reactionary takes on Democrats, obese celebrities, and George Floyd, but also her raging out and out anti-Semitism. With all the experience and fan base she has gathered this far, many celebrities, including Oprah and Whoopi, fear what Candace Owens may do to their presumptive places in Hollywood. Years ago, Whoopi Goldberg quickly proved she was more than just a goofy stage name. The woman born as Corinne Johnson uncorked an off-Broadway show in the early 1980s that snagged the attention of Hollywood's biggest talents. Goldberg forced us to take her seriously, even while her broad grin made us smile while confronting serious issues of the day. Stanetti away from me. You knew she was the only somebody in the world who loved me. She went from a lark to a household name in record time. That's talent. Today, given her reign on television's factually challenged series, The View, and some wildly ignorant takes, she's just another out of touch celebrity. That comedy rebel who charmed us all seems like a distant memory. Her formative years resembled the American dream brought to a glorious, imperfect life. Goldberg grew up poor and without a father for part of her childhood. She had a spark though, changing what she saw as a dull name to Whoopi Goldberg and hitting California to start a show business career. She worked some odd jobs along the way, including a gig as a mortician's makeup artist, but her comic gifts couldn't be denied. Her off-Broadway program, The Spook Show, drew the attention of famed Hollywood director Mike Nichols. You got something, kid. And he was right. The duo team for Whoopi Goldberg, the Broadway production that served as her Hollywood coming out party, the one woman event caught Steven Spielberg's attention and he cast Goldberg in 1985's The Color Purple. A star, as they say, was born. Goldberg missed out on an Oscar for her bravura turn in that Alice Walker adaptation, but it opened all the necessary doors in Tinseltown. She headlined several 80s comedies from there, like Jumpin' Jack Flash of 1986 and Fatal Beauty of 1987, before flexing her dramatic skills via Clara's Heart in 1988 and The Long Walk Home in 1990. Her serial comic turn in 1990's Ghost, one of the decade's biggest hits, snagged her, the Oscar many thought she was denied five years earlier. 
Goldberg did it all from there, raising cash via the long-running Comic Relief fundraising series, anchoring her own comedy franchise, Sister Act, and proving versatile enough to be a constant Hollywood presence. And then came The View. Barbara Walters' vision of a show where women led the way had entrenched itself in TV lore by the time Goldberg joined the show in 2007. Her show business legacy, The View, allowed her to share her background and her wisdom with TV audiences five days a week. She replaced the combustible Rosie O'Donnell as the show's moderator, bringing some stability with her. One of pop culture's few EGOT personalities, she owns an Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, and Tony Award, offered something unique to the talk show. The actress's de facto liberalism made her a snug hit for The View's ideological bent, but she rarely held her co-hosts' feet to the fire when necessary, and at times it seemed her common sense veneer was just a mirage. Perhaps her most outrageous commentary involved disgrace director Roman Polanski. The auteur behind Chinatown had drugged NR, a girl in 1975, and never fully paid for his actions. Polanski admitted to the incident, fleeing the country rather than facing the consequences. Goldberg, deep into a conversation about the matter during a 2009 View episode, described the as different than RR, despite all the evidence to the contrary. I know it wasn't RR, it was something else, but I don't believe it was RRR. He went to jail and when they let him out, he was like, you know what, this guy's gonna give me a hundred years in jail, I'm not staying. So that's why he left. Had those comments happened following the hash in the Me Too revolution, she might have been given her walking papers. Instead, it was back to work as usual. At times, Goldberg still sounded like her old self, someone who understood the value of free speech for her craft. When Deborah Messing and Eric McCormack suggested they wanted Trump supporting artists to be outed and discriminated against, Goldberg lashed out at the Will and Grace duo. In recent years though, the actress has echoed her far left co-hosts. Even worse, the wackier the show became, the more Goldberg allowed the conversations to run off the rails. As the de facto leader, Goldberg couldn't get her fellow hosts to stop talking over each other for starters. She also didn't give conservative co-host Meghan McCain much protection during the latter's four-year run. In fact, the two would often spar on air in ways that seemed inappropriate for a show meant to elevate women in the media. The Oscar winner had once tied McCain's father to the return of slavery to the senator's face. Did you say you wanted strict constitutionalists? Should I worry about being a slave? A return to slavery? Because there are things in the constitution that should have changed. You could argue that Goldberg's downright spiral intensified during the Trump years. In a recent exchange, she described the Republican Party in ways that should shame any professional broadcaster, not Goldberg, apparently. This is part of the big plan to control what happens in America, I believe. Goldberg said of the GOP, you take those voting rights away, people are gonna be so angry, but there will be nothing they can do about it because we're in charge. Next thing comes the women. We're gonna take your rights away just like we're taking X, Y, and Z because there'll be nothing you can do. Well, crazed, conspiratorial, fact-free, talk about misinformation. And then she uncorked her not so hot take on the Holocaust which marked the very worst moment of her view tenure. The extermination of 6 million Jews under Adolf Hitler, Goldberg said, was not about race. The comments quickly rocked the news cycle and Goldberg sent out a swift mea culpa. On today's show, I said the Holocaust is not about race, but about man's inhumanity to man. I should have said it is about both. Yet she attempted more damage control on the far left late show with Stephen Colbert and violated the first rule of holes. She kept digging. Most of the Nazis were white people and most of the people they were attacking were white people. So to me, I'm thinking, how can you say it's about race if you are fighting each other? This wasn't, I said, this wasn't racial. This was about white on white. ABC suspended her for two weeks following the disastrous apology tour. 
A new Daily Mail report doused more kerosene on the cultural fire, unearthing a 1990s faux recipe Goldberg submitted to a cookbook dubbed Jewish American Princess Fried Chicken. The Anti-Defamation League dubbed the submission insulting and anti-Semitic. The recent Candace Whoopi feud isn't the first one the far-right commentator has been involved in recent years. In recent history though, Candace has specifically garnered attention by picking fights with celebrity musicians, often coming under fire online for her views on gender identity, body image, the LGBTQ community, and more. Whether it's about a male musician daring to wear a dress on the cover of a magazine, the Black Lives Matter movement, or what she saw as pandering to Black American voters in the 2020 presidential election, Candace has been put in the hot seat by some of the world's hottest artists several times over with her opponents ranging from Cardi B to Eminem. No matter what people think of her, it goes without saying that the presenter stays loud and proud in her commitment to her oftentimes polarizing opinions, no matter how much controversy they stir. She's always willing to slam someone when she thinks they deserve it, musicians included, but things get extra interesting when those same people bark back, occasionally starting full-on internet wars between an artist's fan base and Candace's devoted viewers. Though her outspoken nature and commitment to stirring the pot indicate that another battle of wits is always on the horizon, we have broken down the host's biggest feuds with musicians of all ages, genres, and backgrounds so far. Here are some of the biggest stars whose feathers she's ruffled or tried to at least. First on the line is Lizzo. Candace blasted Lizzo for posting a nearly nude photo of herself on social media writing, if you peep comments on any of Lizzo's fat acceptance photos, you will undoubtedly find a score of batch insane women telling her that she looks beautiful. Men do not lie to other men in this way. They do not pretend that clinical obesity is beauty. Lizzo hasn't directly responded to Candace, but she announced her partnership with the Dove Self-Esteem Project to combat the impact of harmful beauty standards on social media. I don't need social media. Social media needs me. She shared on Twitter and Instagram hours after Candace's remarks. Next up is Jojo Siwa. The commentator shared a nearly six minute video on Twitter in April, 2023, suggesting that Siwa is pretending to be gay for attention. I don't believe Jojo Siwa is a lesbian, by the way. I want to state that very clearly. I do believe that she's desperate for attention. Candace says in the clip, taken from her Daily Wire podcast. I don't believe Jojo Siwa is a lesbian, by the way. I want to state that very clearly. I do believe that she's desperate for attention and you're not going to believe what she's doing now. But first, let's back it up to just her announcement back in October of 2000. Siwa caught wind of Candace's video and the former Nickelodeon star tweeted two days later, I haven't watched the video yet, but if it has anything to do with your caption, respectfully back the uh, off. And then there is Kanye West. Candace credited the Yeezy mogul for designing Blexit merch, a portmanteau for Black and Exit that mimics Britain's exit from the European Union for her movement, which she launched in late 2018 to encourage Black voters to leave the Democratic Party and register as Republicans. Blexit is a renaissance, and I am blessed to say that this logo, these colors, were created by my dear friend and fellow superhero, Kanye West. The YouTuber told Page Six at Turning Point USA's Young Black Leadership Summit in Washington, D.C. on October 27, 2018. But yet cleared the air on Twitter a few days later when he denied helming the designs. I introduced Candace to the person who made the logo and they didn't want their name on it, so she used mine. He wrote, I never wanted any association with Blexit. I have nothing to do with it. The rapper later wrote that the mishap exposed him to the dangers of falsely spreading ideas he doesn't personally align himself with and announced, I am distancing myself from politics and completely focusing on being creative. But that obviously didn't signal the end of West's political antics as he continued to push forward with his 2020 presidential campaign under his independent birthday party. On Halloween, October 31st, Candace penned an apologetic blog post titled after the rapper's fourth studio album, 
808S in heartbreak for falsely tying him to her Blexit movement, especially considering how much he means to her as a superhero and as a friend. Listening to music from Kanye West and Jay-Z is what I give credit to having kept my spirit alive on some of the very worst days. It's a crazy thing to know that you wake up one day and someone whose words and lyrics literally kept your spirit alive is suddenly your friend. God is good. There are so many people in this world who love Kanye West because they know he is great and powerful and cool, but not every person in this world knows what it means to have someone's rap lyrics literally save you, she began writing. If I had to imagine what it would feel like to have a bullet pierce my heart, it would be exactly like the moment I learned Kanye told the world he felt I had used him. I wouldn't wish the way I felt last night upon my worst enemy. She continued, I never once said that Kanye designed the t-shirts for Blexit. This is a lie that seems to have made its way around the world. A lie I would like to again correct for the record. Kanye was completely right to feel used in that regard. And as I have done personally, I would like to publicly apologize to him for any undue stress or pain the effort to correct that rumor has caused him, his business relationships, or his family. He simply never designed them. Since then, Candace and Ye have patched things up with the far-right commentator supporting the rapper by attending his controversial Paris Fashion Week show in 2022, and Ye returning the favor by walking the red carpet premiere of her film, Greatest Lie Ever Sold, George Floyd and the rise of BLM. The two are now united in exposing the rot in Hollywood and they both claim this is just the beginning. So is there anything you're specifically looking to hear Candace talk about? Let us know in the comment section below. And that's it from us today until next time. Thank you for watching.